this is Christine's Corner. Um, can you tell me who, who you are and where you're from? Hi, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Mark Morello with the Bristol Police Department, and I'm with the department's community relations team. Uh, what do you do here for the community relations team? So part of my job as a community relations uh, officer is to go out and conduct educational uh, classes and training with various groups throughout the city. We also do a lot of charity work and I also conduct uh, all our social media platforms. So Bristol Police Department um, on all the major social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. And so anybody can follow us and I'm in charge of maintaining that and getting the information um, out to the public through those resources. So you work through Facebook too, so you put a lot of things on Facebook. We do, and I encourage everybody to follow us, especially if you're a resident of Bristol. Um, it's a great way to stay up to date, stay informed, um, not only for um, just external public safety issues, but also um, when we have little things going on within Bristol, we had several retirements and several new hires. Those were all uh, on our Facebook page, and. You can watch and see photos. So it's a great, great way to stay engaged with our agency. Well, thank you very much. Um, how long you, did you say you've been here? So I've been a, a police officer for about 20 years. I'm a lieutenant now. Oh. Um, so you've seen a lot. We have, yeah. Over, over, over that time, um, you, you do see a lot in our, in our life. Um, I don't know if you're the one that had to ask about, about domestic violence, or should I ask him about that? So, um, I'd be happy to answer some questions, and if you have additional questions, um, we could certainly um, conduct follow-ups. Yeah, um, when you go out on a domestic violence call, um, how, how do you feel about going out? I mean, what happens? Is there different kinds of domestic violence, or are you geared up to? Maybe there's a gun or not a gun, or how do you react to that? Well, uh, yeah, well, traditionally, domestic violence calls tend to be one of our more high risk calls. Um, the city of Bristol and Bristol Police Department is obviously uh, extremely committed to um, enforcing laws related to domestic violence and reduce the risk to any victims. Uh, we're guided by policies, procedures, and state laws, which have been strengthened over the years to ensure that. Uh, members and victims of domestic violence are given resources and adequate protection from their abusers. Um, how do you decipher which one is on the other one? Well, that's, um, that's done by investigative work, the traditional police work, right? Um, our officers are trained to investigate uh, the calls for service and domestic violence is an area where we take very seriously. And so all of our officers are trained in, in how to separate and interview each party, uh, evaluate the evidence that's being presented, and make that determination based on the evidence available. Um, okay, when you uh, do a right, when you, uh, somebody calls for an ambulance, why is there always a disaster there? So, the City of Bristol and Bristol Police Department are actually first responders. That means we're all medically trained to provide first response um, in the medical arena. Traditionally, police officers uh, cover a much wider area uh, and are more readily available than your traditional ambulance. Um, we could have anywhere from 10 to 15 officers on the road at any given time. And that enables us to respond to calls much more rapidly than the ambulance or, for instance, um, fire department. Both will be located at a, one single location where the police officers are dispersed throughout the town. And that gives us the advantage and the ability to respond much more rapidly. And all of officers are, as I said earlier, trained in first response, uh, we're first responders, uh, and our officers carry uh, AEDs, automatic defibrillators, uh, Narcan, and a wide variety of tools to help treat uh, medical emergencies. I didn't know this. This is 
that that's good that you have, you know, you're also uh, responsible for the, to doing that because you did it first. Um, um, and that goes, and that goes, um, you know, in conjunction, you know, prior to my role in community policing, I oversaw the communications division, which is the, the dispatch center. So when you call 911, we have our civilian dispatchers who answer uh, those calls, and they're actually essentially our first first responders. So if you're incurring a, a medical emergency, for instance, um, our dispatchers are trained to provide over the phone instructions on how to assist in that medical emergency until the police or ambulance get there. You know, and that's been um, that's been years uh, that we've been doing that. Um, it really is um, a, a priceless tool. You know, so our dispatchers um, will give protocols, instructions to somebody on the phone. So. It's really important that you listen to the, the, dis, the dispatchers and listen to their instructions. Um, you know, medical emergencies could um, really strike panic and fear into somebody uh, who's calling and sees their loved one um, in need of medical attention. Um, at times, people in that situation may not really recognize that the dispatcher is asking questions in an effort to better serve that person who's in need. So it's important that everyone stays calm um, and listens to the instructions of the dispatcher so that they can help you help whoever's in need. Well, that's, that's very good. Um, what other what other jobs do you do? So, uh, in, in addition to my to my role as a community service, Is it, yes. Um, I also conduct internal affairs for the police department, and that in that position, it's my duty to uh, investigate any complaints made against police officers. So we're fully committed to transparent um, and accountability, transparency and accountability for the public. And so part of my role is to do that. I'm also the uh, regional commander for SWAT team, and we oversee uh, Bristol, Plainville, Southington, and Plymouth. We have members from each of those agencies on the team. And so that's another role that uh, I play a big role uh, part. In. I didn't realize that Bristol had a SWAT team. We do. Is it every town or just? Uh, it, uh, does every town have, have a something? SWAT team? I'm sorry. No, not every town. Um, some towns rely on, uh, you know, state police, or some just don't have a SWAT team. Um, we're fortunate enough where we're of a size where we can uh, support a team, and. Um, so it's, it's good to know, good to have in case of an emergency that our patrol officers can't handle. You know, we would go ahead and assist. If you had to use the SWAT team? Uh, SWAT team is used. Or is it usually for drugs? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, we're really there. The SWAT team really uh, reserved for really, really critical situations where lives are on the line um, and that the risk is so great that. Uh, we would need to specialize in equipment and training to you. Oh, I see. Um, so, who is your next officer? So, uh, today I brought with me Officer Nick Travisano. He's our school, one of our school resource officers. He works within the school system, and he'll be able to talk to you a little bit more about what it's like working with the, the school kids um, in the school system, and. A little bit about what he sees as far as um, trends in social media um, and illegal drugs, uh, smoking, things of that nature. Okay. Thank you. Sure. My name is Officer Nicholas Trevisano. Uh, I've been with the Bristol Police Department for about six and a half years. Six and a half years. And can you say what you do here? Uh, you said yeah. about vaping and drugs and. Sure. So primarily, my role right now is I'm a school resource officer. Uh, I'm working out of Bristol Eastern High School currently. Um, the years prior to that, so the past two years, I've worked out of uh, Chippensville Middle School and Northeast Middle School dealing with uh, grades six through eight. And right now, uh, I'm in the high school. Um, so you, you stay with, so do you have a lot of friends? I mean, do you talk to a lot of kids and make friends with them? Yeah, so in theory, the, um, you know, for the school resource officer position, um, 
that's kind of the approach that we want to give. So, you know, it's more of a community policing aspect than anything. Um, we want to be out there uh, and we want to be making uh, positive connections uh, with the school staff and with kids and stuff like that. So it would make the jobs of the patrol officers easier. So you want to familiarize, um, you know, kids and adults um, with an officer who that they're who they're comfortable with. So in turn, they you know, they could have a good experience outside of that as well. Do do the kids uh, confide in you once you get to know them? Uh, yeah, I, I found that um, uh, once you. Once you kind of, uh, in the school resource officer position, I guess I'll say, is uh, it's, a, it's a position like, you know, you should really feel comfortable with, um, you know, being vulnerable to these guys and showing them, you know, your personality. And I think once you do that for young, for kids and young adults, uh, I, I feel it becomes a lot easier for them to uh, open up and confide in you and things that are going on. Um, what other things do you do? Uh, so yeah, primarily I'm I'm in the schools. Uh, I also uh, help run the Youth Explorer program. That's out of the city. It's the Youth Cadets. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you have explorers. Yep. So they're the Youth Cadets right now. Uh, we had just been through a uh, name change there, and that age group is about 14 till about 20 or so. And uh, yeah, we currently run that program. Uh, it goes every Thursday, uh, and we have events that go on on weekends. What do they do? Uh, so our primary function for the explorers, um, when things are in normal circumstances, uh, it's another form of community policing where we're out there at community events. So that, that means uh, we have a group of kids. Um, every Thursday we have meetings where we're doing trainings like any other officer would. Um, and then on these weekend events where we're out in public, uh, we expect these kids to be out there and executing the jobs of, say, a police officer. So for example, there's the uh, Polish American Fest that hires us. Uh, every year and the kids are for that event uh, in particular they're in charge of kind of patrolling the parking lots and helping out uh, during the actual event um, if there's some problems with parking or vendors need uh, some help taking stuff you know putting stuff up putting stuff down uh, that's what the kids are primarily there for so this is all volunteer it is a yep yeah, it is a way uh, for volunteer work um, I mean we really it, the program is catered towards uh, kids who have interest in law enforcement uh, in the military uh, it's a really good launching pad for um, you know for kids who are interested in those uh, career paths. But um, we get people from all walks of life, and we welcome people from all you know different backgrounds. I think that's what makes the program good. It you know it gives it some strong diversity, um, and it, the the explorer pro, you know the cadet program is an extension of the police department. So the things that we're training them you know we're expected to do as well. So um, anytime we're sending somebody out in the community, they're a, they're they're a direct reflection of us. It keeps them off the streets too. It does keep them off the streets, um, and like I said, I mean, the kids that we do attract who are interested in it, um, you know, have have the real interest in law enforcement, have a real interest in like a military, you know, type background. So um, you know, with that interest, kind of comes along with you know the standards that we adopt as the police department. You know, the kids will start to adopt. So yeah, it will. It typically we see it. You know, keeping kids out of trouble. Um, you know. They come from all different backgrounds, and um, you know they're all really proficient in, in the stuff that they do in school. So, um, so what are the things that you noticed that when you you're in the schools helping out the kids? Uh, so, a lot of the things that the school resource officers typically deal with um, is kind of more involved with like social media, right? So, I think the two biggest things that that, that come up a lot are problems on social media where kids are having problems with one another, and uh, problems of um, vaping or you know some kind of minor narcotics uh, use like marijuana. Oh. So vaping is it illegal? Uh, vaping is yeah, and uh, we've you know, we've been doing there's been a big campaign for it you know like putting more um, notoriety on it. Um, that's something that you know we're totally aware of, and and it is and it is punishable. And the way that we try to approach something like that is um, we try to, as the resource officers and this, we try to work with the school as best as possible. So um, the school, for example, you know, we both have the best interest of the kid in mind, and in most cases, the school is going to be able to tell us, you know, what the best course of action and, and the best ways to support the kid. So you know, there is some police interdiction when those things happen. Um, but we really use them as an educational experience. You know, that's our first 
that's our first goal. We want to we, we want it to stop, obviously, but we also want to be educators in that respect, and we also want to help the school deal with the parents. So we, we try to make it a group effort. It, it's not just like the police come in, enforce the law, and kind of get out there. I mean, we really go above and beyond to make the family feel included, make the school feel included, and to try to get like uh, the desired outcome, which is for it to stop. Oh, that's good. So it's just not. Um, right away, you're 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 done because we caught you vaping or. Uh, no, yeah, I think it would be or... quite the opposite. Actually, um, I think the school has adopted a really strong policy for vaping. Uh, they do understand that you know it is prevalent and it does happen, uh, so it gets the attention it deserves. And I think um, you know we're really we're right in line with uh, what the school's wishes are. Oh, that's good. Um, there anything else you can tell us before I move to the next opposite? Uh, I mean, I, you know, as school resource officers uh, under the community relations division, I mean, we just try to strive for, um, you know, getting out there in the community and just creating, um, you know, positive interactions. If someone's skipping school, are you the one that... No, to... that's handled by our truancy officer, who, uh, 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 Erica Triani. So I defer all that stuff to her, but we work pretty close together. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you do an amazing job all, all of you. Sure. Uh, Lieutenant Jason Warner, 19 years. 19 years, and what do you do? I'm um, lieutenant of the training division. The training division? Um, what do you train? So we oversee uh, all the recruiting, the hiring, certification, uh, in-house trainings, so everything it takes to be a police officer and uh, maintain your status as a police officer as far as certification is gone. Okay, how long have you been doing this? I've been in this position for about a year and a half. A year and a half? What did you do before? I was a shift commander, so I ran the uh, second shift patrol division. Second shift? Oh. So um, what have you seen on your, when you get called out for duties? Uh, well, for shift commander, it's more of a, uh, you take a kind of administrative role. Oh, okay. So you oversee the entire shift, so you have. So you, you're not doing that? Anymore. No, so you have two sergeants. You know, anywhere from nine to fourteen patrolmen, depending on which shift and what nights you're on. Um, but my position now at the train division, like I said, we uh, we recruit at local colleges. Uh, we recruit in the city at local various events. We work well with the town of the community relations division to try to keep our name out there and uh, kind of, so kind of keeps our staffing up where we need to be. Uh, we'll usually test about once a year. Uh, we're in the testing process now. We just finished our written test last weekend. Uh, we have four uh, four recruits in the academy right now, so we try to maintain our department staffing levels. That's what we're trying to do. Well, that's good. Um, so you you have four from there. Um, when you recruit them, do they just they come up to you, or you just go up to you? Yeah. So to we'll, them? no. So what we do is we'll um, various colleges in the area will host career fairs. So we attend the career fairs, and uh, you know if you've ever been, it's just a bunch of the college students just walk by and we'll. Most of it's geared towards some type of government, law enforcement type. Um, so it'll be, you know, Bristol will be there and other various departments will be there. And it's just, you know, interacting, introducing ourselves, you know, off, you know showing what we offer, uh, trying to get contact info with them. Once we have a contact list, we'll usually reach out to them. We'll help host an open house. You know, we'll bring them into the station, you know, show them what we do, what we're about. We also host ride-alongs with them. So if they want to do a ride-along, they'll go out with a, Usually it's a field training officer for about four hours. They'll ride around and get to see exactly what the patrol officer does you know, during a, a given shift. And then uh, hopefully we can get them to, uh, to apply and then work them through the, uh, the hiring process. 